private property has long been regarded as one of the most important and most iconic pillars of our society. If you've ever read the Declaration of Independence or the U.S. Constitution, you would think that property is an untouchable right. Unfortunately, that is often not the case. Federal, state, and local governments have the power to take people's property for their own uses using eminent domain. This means that if your property is in the way of a road or is desired for a city building or park, and you are unwilling to voluntarily sell to the government, they can go ahead and take it anyway. Eminent domain has been declared constitutional so long as the process satisfies the requirement for due process of law and the property owners receive just compensation for what's been taken from them. But that doesn't mean the status quo is harmless or good policy. Many people think that the government sometimes has no other choice but to take private property in order to provide essential services. Maybe you think that if a local government ever took this too far, there would be an avenue for judicial redress. Unfortunately, in the 2005 case Kilo v. City of New London, the U.S. Supreme Court addressed this issue and opted to expand rather than restrict the government's power of eminent domain. The precedent resulting from this case states that the only constitutional restrictions on a state government's eminent domain power is the limitation that it be used for a public purpose. What exactly is a public purpose? Well, it could mean pretty much anything. Utah law has an exhaustive list of reasons for which eminent domain can be used, but the law also includes an additional provision allowing property to be taken for all other public uses for the benefit of any county, city, or town, or its inhabitants. This expanded power has allowed eminent domain to be used to favor special interest groups, to build recreational facilities, and in some cases, to be handed over to private contractors. Some limitations do exist, but did you know that it is still well within the government's prerogative to take your property to build a park or recreation center? This is problematic for several reasons. Recreational services hardly seem like an essential government function, but if a community really wants a park, the government should negotiate with a willing buyer for the land instead of taking whatever is most convenient for the city. Prioritizing government efficiency above private property demonstrates the lack of respect and rights that have been afforded to property owners. On top of that, the government's ability to take your property for the use of a park allows governments to weaponize eminent domain and turn any land or building that they don't like into a simple grassy plot with a few benches. Even if there is no specific project or development that requires a land, the government always has the option to take it anyway and turn it into a park. The laws that govern eminent domain should exist to protect citizens and their property, not to be used as a tool for government overreach. Eminent domain, if it must exist, ought only to be used in the rarest of cases when strictly necessary, not when a majority of residents or elected officials think a park might be nice. Utahns deserve to be secure in their rights and in their private property, and the law needs to change to make that happen. For Libertas Institute, I'm Erin Christensen.